will be joining us very shortly. Paolo, hello, welcome. How are yeah. you? Hello, hello. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, hello from, from Mexico, virtually. So yes, today I'll be representing the uh, state of Nayarit with the Riviera Nayarit. And the price will be uh, 50 pound or it's equivalent in US dollars or euros um, voucher, uh, Amazon voucher. So, yeah. Super. Thank you very much. Polo, would you like me to kickstart you and go and play your video? Oh, perfect. Yes, please. Let, let's go to the video. Thank you. OK, let me just grab the video. There we go. It's a lovely video. It's uh, definitely Looks pretty perfect to me, Polo. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. So welcome, every, everyone. We'll I'll now share my presentation. I hope um, you all can see my screen now. So we'll be traveling to Mexico today. So I know that today is a webinar uh, about North America. The reason I'm here is because this destination that some of you might know uh, is very, very popular for twin uh, holiday destination uh, combined with uh, other North American destinations uh, and uh, with, a, with a finale, grand finale in the, the coast of Mexico. So we are located on the west coast of Mexico, on the Pacific coast. So for the next 15 minutes, I'll show you why this destination is a, a very popular destination for the North American market, of course, but also for the Europeans who want to discover um, Mexico in the very authentic area uh, where Nayarit uh, is located. So where are we located? We're in the west coast of Mexico, as I mentioned before, right in the middle of this very long Pacific coast um, uh, line of Mexico. Uh, we are at the same latitude as Hawaii or Thailand. So that gives you a clue on the uh, type of um, scenery and uh, landscapes that your clients can see. Uh, very tropical, uh, green uh, and lush uh, destination in Mexico. Um, so a very important element I wanted to, to stress uh, to begin with is the connectivity that we have in the, in the, at the destination. Um, the main gateway uh, to get into the Riviera Nayarit is the international airport of Puerto Vallarta. So Puerto Vallarta is this other very notorious destination that does not belong to the state of Nayarit. It belongs to a different state, the state of Jalisco, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter. We share this airport um, and this is the main gateway uh, into this area um, here. So um, Puerto Vallarta's airport is very well connected uh, with other um, big destinations in, in Mexico as well. Uh, but also it's one of the Mexican airports that is uh, that has the best connectivity with North American airports, in particular with the um, American um, hubs, main hubs, and also uh, it is the airport that has the best connectivity during the winter time with uh, Canadian airports. So that's another reason why this is a perfect location for a twin uh, holiday um, package. So this is uh, this is why very, very well connected. We are now almost uh, the same level of connectivity before COVID, um, but we are still um, recovering uh, that, uh, that, uh, that important connectivity that we used to have. And from Europe, or from the UK in particular, we have direct flights as well, which TUI from Manchester and from Gatwick. Uh, that is the only direct um, 
direct option from, from Europe, uh, but we are working also on developing hopefully soon uh, other direct um, flights uh, from other places in Europe as well, particularly in Spain. So stay tuned if you have some clients or some uh, agents connecting from, from Spain as well. Um, then one of the main assets of the region is our um, perfect weather, I think, perfect holiday weather. So we have a very, very um, sunny, uh, uh, it, we're a very sunny place, 360 days uh, of sun and very warm um, temperatures in the air, but also in the water. And this is very important because in the Pacific coast of Mexico, that is not the case everywhere. In this area here in uh, Riviera Nayarit, we have a very warm waters. Water. So that makes that all our beaches, uh, almost all our beaches are swimmable and uh, most of them are very family friendly, so very um, friendly with the, with the children, so a perfect family holiday destination as well. Uh, some images just to start with the presentation, just to give you an idea, as I mentioned before, very tropical, very green, a big mountain that we have in at the back of the of the area that is the Sierra Madre mountain, so uh, it gives uh, the area a very uh, kind of a tropical Pacific coast uh, feel, of course, uh, very different from other places in Mexico that are flatter. And here you have a lot of um, mountains and a lot of activities in those mountains as well, for those that um, prefer some uh, activities outside of the water as well. Uh, some different areas. So we are a destination that is very um, heterogeneous, very, very mixed uh, type of uh, places. So for example, this one that is called uh, it used to be called Nuevo Vallarta, now it's called Nuevo Nayarit, it's been just renamed, um, but it's this place that is only 15 minutes from the airport of Puerto Vallarta and only 20-25 minutes from the town of Puerto Vallarta in the neighboring state of Jalisco uh, that ha does, uh, has this uh, very um, interesting infrastructure, including two marinas, three golf courses in this area, and a lot of hotels. All the hotels in this area are beachfront, uh, so with this very long and very wide um, sandy beach that uh, is uh, present in here. Here we are inside of uh, the largest bay in Mexico, the Bay of Banderas, which is also a very important element to give us this uh, very calm waters, very friendly for the kids as well. So very nice. But we also have other places that are a little bit more remote or feel a little bit more remote. This is an example. Uh, some, some of the best hotels in the region are um, in the nature. So within the nature, in this uh, photo, you can see two of them um, that are there. For example, we have in the center of the image, the Imanta Hotel, that is a very well-known hotel, luxury hotel and wellness retreat in the area. So as you can see, they're really um, in into the into the jungle into the into the nature so very nice feeling for your clients so a lot of opportunities to encounter and to um, experience this uh, very lush uh, nature that we have in the mountain um, as i mentioned before we have obviously we're on the pacific coast so we have this pacific coast feeling so sandy beaches golden sandy beaches with uh, palm trees uh, behind so very popular for surfers as uh, surfers as we will see a little bit later. Uh, we have other regions like this one, Punta Mita, that is one of the most known areas in the Pacific coast, particularly for luxury travel. Uh, we have some interesting luxury hotels here, like Four Seasons, uh, San Bridges. Uh, there's new developments also going on there. We have a W Hotel here. We have another two golf courses. In total, we have nine golf courses in the, in the region. And in this particular peninsula, we have uh, sandy beach, well, also sandy beaches, like in the other beaches, but they are uh, white, white sandy beaches. So you think that you are in the Caribbean because of the color of the water and the, and the sand uh, in this area as well. So really, really popular. And just a, a little detail in this uh, image, we have uh, this uh, golf course that has a, a green on the, on the ocean. So that's very popular for golf lovers, which is quite unique in the world. Um, obviously, we are on the Pacific coast, so very nice sunsets yet that you don't get on the Caribbean side of Mexico, for example. So uh, with very striking views of the of the bay, and obviously that makes us a very romantic uh, destination, ideal for weddings, honeymoons, uh, and all sorts of um, 
anniversaries. Uh, some extraordinary places as well, like this one, for example, the Marietas Islands, which is one of the uh, main attractions in the area, combined during the winter time uh, with whale watching, which is a very popular activity as well here. Uh, the Marietas Islands have been declared a protected um, biosphere area a few years ago, so now it's only possible to visit, um, well, only 100 people per day can visit, and only up to, I think, 50 15 people per group. Uh, so it's very important to pre-book through your DMC or uh, through any operator locally there, uh, this activity. Um, it's not for everyone. You need to swim a little bit to get into this um, into this secret uh, beach, but it's it's worth it. It's really, really nice. But well, you, you need to be a quite confident swimmer. Um, but I mean, it's, it's nothing extreme, but or a little bit extreme, but that's the, the interesting part. Um, then other places like Sayulita, which is uh, one uh, very authentic time, town in the area. This is like the uh, Nayarit uh, surfing capital. So this is the place where most of the surfers go and stay with a very authentic uh, Mexican uh, atmosphere in the area. Um, all the the town is um, well. All the population of the town has their own festivities and their own um, life. So basically, your clients will be immersed into this very authentic Mexican uh, community, uh, which is also very very interesting. Uh, whale watching, as I mentioned before, very important from uh, activity from November end of November until end of March when the whales leave us uh, and go back to to the north. Um, so they come from the end of November until the end of March. Very, very popular. Um, also a very, very interesting wildlife with a lot of opportunities uh, to see many birds, uh, endemic birds, but also um, my, my, migrant, well, um, birds that come just for for, uh, for some periods um, and many other activities related to uh, wildlife in the mountain and in the sea as well. Um, also, all the more remote places like this one in the north of the Riviera Nayarit, of course, uh, that feels quite uh, uh, unique as well. We have uh, very proudly in the area um, a local population, uh, pre-Hispanic population that is called the Huichol people or Huirarica people as well, that live um, partially a part of the time in the, in the coast of Nayarit. So it's very easy to um, meet them and learn about their culture, their um, way of living and to see their beautiful dresses and um, speak to them. So it's very interesting as well. So that gives us a, a very uh, interesting cultural aspect to the holidays uh, in this area. So they also live in the mountain. It's possible to visit those communities in the mountain. Those are new products that we are launching in the state of Nayarit. So we're getting away from the beach only um, aspects of the destination. We're also developing new routes that go in, inland into the, uh, into, the, into the state, into the mountains of the state, and also to the north, to some beautiful islands that we will see a little bit later as well. Well, here, here is one of them. So the island of Mezcaltitan, which is a very interesting historical area in Mexico. Um, some say that this is a place where the Aztecs left uh, a long, long time ago to uh, found the, what well, today is known as Mexico City in the center of the country. Um, well, whether it's true or not, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that this is a very interesting legend and this town is very uh, popular now for more adventurous travelers who want to uh, get away from the, as I mentioned before, beach only holiday. So this is located about three hours away from the main uh, tourist uh, resorts uh, in the south of the Riviera Nayarit. A very important aspect is the gastronomy of the of the state of Nayarit and in particular um, of this, this area. Um, so very fresh produce uh, coming from the sea, from the mountain, a lot of seafood, of course, a lot of um, prawns and um, oysters and really, really fresh um, and interesting food. Uh, we have also uh, in general in Mexico, but we have in this region a lot of options for vegans, for vegetarians, because a lot of um, products come from from you know from locally from the from the mountain so very easy to get some of those options as well where to stay um so we have 23 micro destinations most of the hotels 90 percent of the hotels are located in the south of the of the of the 
with the coastline uh, within a radius of two hours away from the airport, from Puerto Vallarta's airport. So that's where 90% of the hotels are located. Uh, so here you have the list of the hotels that are located there. So we have, and by the way, we will share this presentation later. I will share this uh, later with you. We have everything from small boutique hotels to independent uh, boutique hotels as well, um, four and five star all-inclusive uh, resorts in the area, also luxury and ultra-luxury properties. In particular, the Riviera Nayarit is the area in Mexico where most of the luxury brands are building at the moment new properties. So this is to become the new luxury uh, place in Mexico in the next five uh, or 10 years. Uh, but the, the, the let's say the, the thing that uh, is very characteristic of this area is that all of the hotels are quite new, quite contemporary. So your clients will uh, feel uh, be in a, in, in a really contemporary place uh, because this is a quite recent uh, tourist destination. Um, so most of the hotels are new. So that's uh, a plus for your clients. So new developments, as I mentioned before, well, this slide has to be updated because there's nothing new in 2019. We're already in 2023. I cannot believe it. Uh, but we have had uh, some uh, recent new developments and some of them have been a little bit delayed. So are in the process of being uh, opening. I'll just mention a few just to give you an idea. We have a new one and only last year, not 2022, well, end of 2021. Um, we uh, have just uh, opened a new Four Seasons, it's called Naviva, which is this glamping uh, ultra luxury place uh, in there. Uh, there's another new auberge, uh, it's called Susurros del Corazon, very long name uh, from the auberge uh, brand that is also very, very interesting. And then we have also uh, recently opened um, in 2022 a new uh, big AM resort uh, that is half of, half of it is a secret the other half is uh, dreams but it's in my opinion one of the most um, interesting architectural uh, places that i've seen in terms of hotels uh, and certainly in the area it's uh, stunning when you get there it's really like a nice nice uh, hotel very very modern and then many many other uh, developments that we are expecting in the next uh, few years so as i mentioned before keep this area in your radar it will become uh, the new big big thing in mexico uh, hopefully. Um, so just to summarize some key selling points of the area, um, it's a Pacific Coast destination, so different to the Caribbean, that is very, very well known already. Uh, so it's a novelty, exclusivity, very natural landscapes, very uh, interesting um, feeling of remoteness, but you are never too remote, you're never more than an hour away from the airport or two hours away from the airport but it feels remote um it feels like really in the net in the nature the the weather is exceptional in the sea so all again all the beaches are swimmable really really important to mention that it's not the case in other pacific coast destinations in mexico the quality of service that is uh, well, in general, quite good in, in Mexico. It's a high and low season destination. Um, basically, in the winter time, we have more North Americans and Canadians. And in the summertime, we have probably more domestic and Europeans. Um, so the UK is our third uh, international market. So US first, Canada, and then the third one is the UK as well, but also very popular for um for domestic market, a very authentic place, uh, very ideal for slow travel. You know, we had a lot of digital nomads who are still there, uh, a lot of people who just uh, went there for a long, long time. A lot of Canadians also have uh, part-time residency in this place. Uh, so they come and come every year, which is a, a good sign, I guess. And finally, well, the main point of this webinar is a perfectly, uh, it's perfect to combine this place with other North American um, uh, places for a European to go, let's say, uh, to visit uh, LA for a week and then end up for, end the holidays in um, in the Riviera Nayarit. Uh, that'll be a perfect perfect combination. Um, I think that's it for me. So these are my contact details, uh, our social media channels as well. And I'm based in London. So uh, any any information you might need um, here, I'm very happy to do a bespoke uh, presentations to visit you and then just count on me for any anything you might need. Thank you very much and see you later for the questions, I think. Thank you, Sarah.
Thank you very much, Polo. I'm just going to do a couple of questions now, um, just while we're here, because Barbara's got a couple um, from the presentations. And yeah, a lot of people are saying that how, I can't believe how colourful it is. Um, it's extremely colourful. It looks beautiful. Um, so Barbara's asked, would there be good snorkelling? Yes. Um, so the Pacific coast in Mexico generally is not the let's say the best known place for snorkeling but this is an exception so in this area we do have a few places for snorkeling uh, i think for example in a place called uh, Cor coral island isla coral which is about uh, 35 minutes from from the coast in the north uh, from a place called guayabitos which is north of uh, where the one and only is uh, which is called mandarina uh, and this is a perfect place for for snorkeling with a lot of tropical fish as well uh, but also in the south of the of the bay, there are a few places as well in the neighboring state of Jalisco as well. There's a few places for snorkeling with tropical fish and warm, warm waters. So, yeah, that, and there are activities related to that. Super. And whale watching, is it a specific time of year? Yes, from end of November until the end of March. That's the whale watching season. Uh, that is usually combined with a tour of the Marietas Island. So this island with the kind of crater in, in between, in the middle. And also it's combined with, um, well, sightings of other places in the in the bay. And um, yes, and well, we have all the other mammals in the in the in the area here. We have a lot of dolphins, rays. So yeah, there's always something spectacular to to see. But whale watching is from end of March and end of November to end of March. Super, thank you very much. A really good question here. Um, if my clients do not speak Spanish, will that be a problem? No, um, I would say that in most of the, so basically this is uh, combined with Puerto Vallarta, this is the second most um, popular um, beach destination in Mexico, so I mean it's a, it's a very, very, um, the infrastructure and everything is very good, the service is really good, and a lot of people, I would say most of the people who work in the hotels and in the hospitality industry will speak English, some of them perfectly um and even the locals yeah english is uh, yeah quite in this area is quite well spoken super and there's another question that's on the um q a so if you could answer that for a um just send them a reply back to that one um that is good if you've got any further questions for polo please drop us a q drop them into the q a and we'll make sure that they are answered. Oh, Colleen's just asked, um, are there a variety of luxury all-inclusive resorts? Yes, all-inclusive resorts, we do have uh, some. So I'll just mention three that come to my mind, but there might be others. Uh, so, uh, for example, there's a Gran Velas. So in Mexico, there are three Gran Velas. Uh, one is in the Caribbean, another one is here in the Riviera Nayarit. It's ultra-luxury, all-inclusive, from the mini bars to everything is included. Uh, on, well not the spas and everything but yes uh, there's one here and the the ones i mentioned secrets which is well kind of quite high, high end um and there's another one that came to my mind and i forgot but yes i can send you the list um and definitely yes yes and just to for the question before there's a question about yeah because i want to mention this uh, area is very safe and as many of other places in mexico um most of the tourist places as well i mean tourists will not be involved in this I, I would say it's a very very safe place there's no incidents there's no uh, news or anything strange happening or yeah so feel free to send your clients here definitely super thank you very much okay so we're now going to leave mexico and we're moving over to quebec bonjour quebec hey laura how are you bonjour i'm very well thank you how are you I'm very, very good. I'm looking forward to this because I have been to Quebec and I absolutely loved it. I think it was my favourite city in North America. Oh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. OK, great. I will just um, share my screen. If I can. Very jealous that you sat at Chateau Frontenac. We had oh, a nice you coffee. even know where I am. I'm very impressed. <laughs> Hang on, two seconds for me. And don't forget, if you've got a video, to tick the box to share your sound. Yeah, I did. Perfect. Cool. Thank you very much. Oops. Oops. It's mm -hmm. a bit strange. I know. Okay. You might have to minimize it. Um, oh, here we go. That's it. Professor. 
No. Yeah, it's not. It's what it's um, less okay. narrow. That's and I think you have to roll it uh, um, up and down just to. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's fine. It'll do. No, it's fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, brilliant. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, my name's Laura, and I represent, represent um, Quebec here in the UK. Um, so today, I'm just going to be giving you a quick insight into Quebec and everything there is to see and do and what we're famous for. So um, just a little bit about Quebec before we begin. Quebec is a province in the east of Canada um, where you can see highlighted in white, so this area here. Um, Quebec is um, the country's largest province um, in terms of territory. Um, we're a large playground of wilderness, parks, lakes and rivers. Um, we are also strategically located, so Montreal is only a five hour drive to either Toronto or Boston and it's only a six hour drive um, to New York City as well. Um, just a little bit more about Quebec, uh, Quebec's regions. Um, Quebec is the largest of Canada's 10 provinces in, in um, an area with 1.6 million square kilometres and is only second to Ontario with the highest population. Um, the capital city of Quebec is Quebec City um, and it is the oldest um, in Canada as well and is also recognised um, by um, UNESCO as a world heritage city. Um, other major cities of ours include Montreal, which is the biggest city in Quebec with a population of over 4 million. Um, and Gatineau as well to name a few. Um, our population um, is around 8 million people and it's predominantly French speaking throughout all of our regions um, but that it, it's also quite diverse with immigrants from all around the world and one thing we all have in common is our friendliness and hospitality so we welcome tourists here as we do our family. Um, just to say as well everyone does speak English as well or, mo or most people when you get to the, the more remote regions you might struggle a little bit but definitely in Montreal and Quebec City most people speak English so it shouldn't be a deterrent um, for anyone there. So why Quebec? I will just show you a quick video um, just so you can see a little bit more about Quebec than I've got time to tell you about. Let me just see if this works. Bonjour Quebec. <laughs> as soon as you enter the city, you notice how beautiful it is. There is art everywhere you look. Bonjour Quebec! Quebec is a giant get-together. People like to entertain and they like to share the culture with you. Everyone's always welcome. When you travel in Quebec, you are constantly saying to yourself, it's so big, maybe I'm the first to fish here or the first to walk here. in love with Quebec because I always feel like I'm on vacation. With all that sunlight, you just want to go outside. It's like the more you get to know it, the more your love of Quebec grows. Amazing. So I hope that that video just gave you a bit of a flavor of what we love about our destination and what makes us so unique. Um, so what makes us so unique is three key pillars. It's cut off there a little bit. But um, firstly, we have a culture that creates. We have a unique culture, unlike any other in North America. Um, we have a culture that's proud of its particular and distinctive character. Um, our culture um, goes beyond arts and music as well. And it's also the way we do things. It's the way we think. Um, secondly, we have our warm welcome. So Quebecers are friendly people that greet travellers like long lost friends. Um, so our welcome is one that is open, inclusive and authentic. Um, and we are generous by nature and we want to make sure that all our guests have a great time. Um, and thirdly, we have a connection to the land. So with Arctic islands to the north and the St. Lawrence River to the south, we are surrounded by a vast wilderness, um, along with numerous lakes and rivers. And that's what makes our nature so attractive is the ability to be immersed within it. So you can be hiking in the forest, you can be canoeing in the lake, you can rent a bicycle, you can ride for hours and hours, or you can, you know, in just a few hours, one or two hours, you can be back in Montreal City, um, where you you've got, you know, the hustle and bustle of, of city life.
So what to experience in Quebec? Um, so we have some unique experiences, and I'm really sorry it's cut off here, <laughs> um, but we have vibrant cities and festivities. We have culture and living history. We have our great outdoors, um, local flavours, the St. Lawrence River, and we have winter fun as well. Um, so vibrant cities and festivities, they, we have excitement all year long. Um, our culture and living history, it's rich and varied. It's everywhere. We have our great outdoors, which is nothing short of spectacular. Um, we have our local flavours, our local cuisine, which is very varied and simply delicious um, and we also have um, the St Lawrence River of course a majestic river that literally turns into the sea um, and then we have our winter fun as well so visiting Quebec in the winter is a whole new experience in itself. So just coming on to vibrant cities and festivities first, um, just like our inhabitants, Quebec cities are friendly and lively and they welcome visitors to join in the fun all year long. Um, many of our bustling neighbourhoods showcase history and architecture and festivities which form Quebec's um, unique cultural heritage day and night. So starting with uh, Montreal, when we think of vibrant cities, naturally we think of Montreal. Um, considered the cosmopolitan capital of Quebec, um, it's the largest French-speaking city in North America. Um, Montreal is a major metropole that is made up of um, several small neighbourhoods, um, such as Little Italy, which have their own unique um, atmosphere, architecture and diversity as well. Um, Montreal... Montreal also has um, a mix of old world heritage and modern skyscrapers. Um, Mon Montreal is renowned for its, its energy and its joy de beer. Um, parks abound. You've, you've got uh, Mount Royal um, um, to the, the party de deals, um, home of the Canadian Grand Prix, um, and festivals such as world famous um, Montreal Interna International Jazz Festival um, in the summer, um, in July every year, um, which is the Canada um, signature experience, um, which drives up the city. Um, Montreal also hosts um, 75 outstanding festivals and cultural events all year round um, so be sure to check all of them out on our on our website at visitmontreal.com as well as bonjourquebec.com um, to see what's going on and um, when your travellers are visiting. Within the city as well, we do also have our quarter de spectacles, and this is the entertainment district where we have one kilometres of 80 venues that are just dedicated to entertainments. So from the north to the south of Montreal, it's only um, four kilometres, so it makes it perfectly walkable. Um, as well as being the bubbly city that doesn't sleep, Montreal also has its um, very own mountain called Mount Royal, which reigns over the, the downtown core. Um, so Montreal, uh, Mount Royal, sorry, is Montreal's very own um, central park, if you like. Um, it has an amazing forest, which is nestled in the heart of the city with breathtaking views. Um, Montreal also have a rule to preserve its landscape, uh, meaning that no building can actually be higher than the peak of Mount Royal. Um, which ensures that the whole city doesn't become, you know, a skyscrape, skyscraping concrete jungle, if you like. Um, another must-see in, um, in Montreal is Old Montreal and the Old Port, which boasts of French and British and Indigenous um, heritage. So the city is steeped in history, yet it's sure to charm you. Um, the area is constantly um, reinventing itself with new activities every year that emerge on um, its century-old streets among heritage buildings. You have the Grand Ferris Wheel and the MTPL, um, MTL zip line, um, which are all perfect for families um, and visitors as well. You can discover art galleries and handicraft shops and boutiques and restaurants restaurants and cafes and um, all along the streets that date back to the new days of New France as well. So in the port you also have um, Cirque du Soleil on every year as well, um, which is on at the big top. Come the winter, it, it um, the Cirque du Soleil it actually leaves and it becomes um, the, festival, the festival for the Igloo Festival, which is more for electronic music. So we also, in Montreal, we also have City Memoir, which is one of my favourites. Um, it's the most amazing art installation. It's made up of 80 projectors that project onto buildings. So you can download a free app. Um, travellers can just wander around the city and you can follow the route on the app as well to see where these projections are. And they, they will project onto buildings and they'll have a story around it as well. So if you can plug your headphones or something into your phone, you can actually hear more about what the picture shows and, and the history behind it. And it's, it's really cool. Um, in in Montreal as well, we also have a passport, um, which is great value for money if travellers want to see many um, attractions in Montreal as well, and they can purchase this through the Montreal website. Um, other recommendations we suggest in Montreal is a walking tour, a food tour, a visit to the underground city, um, a, vi a visit to Notre Dame, um, the Museum of History as well. Um, there, there's so much more than we have time for um, to mention today as well. There's also plenty new in 2023. We have new restaurants, we have refurbished hotels um, and lots more as well. Summer festivals, everything. 
So just coming on to Quebec City now, um, it's the cradle of French civilization in North America. Um, old Quebec is one of um, only two fortified cities in North America, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage um, City, which will charm you with its um, old European modern setting. Um, so a walk through the streets um, in Quebec City is like a walk back in time. Festivals here, such as um, the celebration of French Canadian heritage, um, Les Fêtes de la Nouvelle France, and the Quebec Winter, uh, Winter Carnival as well, which is on every February. Um, and again, both um, Canada's signature experiences, which are not to be missed. Um, Quebec City is also home to the famous Chateau Frontenac, which is sitting behind me, um, and it's the most world. Uh, it's the most. It's the world's most photographed hotel with or without a filter. Um, so Ch Chateau Frontenac is an absolute must see. It overlooks the Saint Lawrence River, um, and the building first opened in nineteen. 1893 um, with 170 hotel rooms um, and it's been there for over 200 years. So many famous people have stayed there, um, such as Queen Elizabeth II, Celine Dion, Princess Grace of Monaco, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, Paul McCartney, Charlie Chaplin, just to name a few, Winston Churchill as well. Today it's undergone um, a multi-million dollar refurbishment and it repositions itself as one of the world's most leading hotels. Um, another hot spot in Quebec City is Palace Royale, where you'll find a mix of French and British and Indigenous North American influences. Um, within Old Quebec as well, um, it can be discovered by strolling through the um, small cobblestone streets. Um, it's a historic area, but it's not outdated. Um, so you can shop there, you can take gourmet breaks, it's perfectly romantic in the winter, but it's just as great to visit in the summer as well. Um, so it was here actually that the city was first founded and through images, um, you can also recognize the area um, as it's famous for um, film backdrops as well. From Quebec City as well, you also you can go from the lower town to the upper town by climbing the Cassé Co staircase or the funicular um, connect, connected to the Dufferin Terrace, which is a, a, a zip line car thing, if you like, um, where the Chateau Fortinac overlooks the St. Lawrence River as well. Um, in Quebec City as well, you do also have Hotel de Glace, so it's only 20 minutes from the city, um, and it's, it's unique of its kind in um, North America, and it consists of 2,300 blocks of ice and 15,000 tons of snow. Um, so even if you don't spend the night there, you can visit the Great Hall, the chapel, and the slide in the rooms, and each of the rooms features impressive carvings and colourful lighting, um, and each winter a new theme inspires the architects for a spectacular uh, decorations as well. And of course, you can make sure your clients don't leave without them um, um, drinking a cocktail served in a glass of ice. Um, then just quickly coming on to the Montmorency Falls as well. This is a stunning waterfall. It's actually 30 meters taller than Niagara Falls. Um, so you can you, you can just imagine how tall it is. Um, so as I said, yeah, it's only about a 20 meter, a 20 minute, uh, 20 minute drive from um, Quebec City. So it's not too far at all. Um, you get there by car or public transport. Um, and all the viewpoints of the falls are photogenic. So you've got the suspension bridge, which you can walk across. You've got the pa panoramic staircase as well, which is 487 steps. Um, you can also enjoy the zip line that um, over a distance of 300 meters or the gondola cable car starting from a space and even better it's it's not far from Quebec City at all. Um, we did mention the Winter Carnival as well, that's in Quebec City every February. Um, the carnival actually began in 1955 um, and it was one of the largest winter festivals in the world. Um, so there's loads to do, it's great for families. You've got ice, the Ice Palace, night parades, canoe races, snow sculptures, um, snow baths, winter games and so much more. Um, just coming on to Indigenous traditions, um, so our Indigenous nations are fun fundamental and part of our culture. From Wendaki near Quebec City um, to Nunavik in northern Quebec, you'll discover traditions and knowledge that's been handed down from generation to generation um, through their culture, their gastronomy, their sp spirituality and their great respect for nature as well. Um, so in Wendaki, um, again not far from Quebec City at all, we have the Huron Wendat Museum, um, which is an institution that's created to preserve the heritage of the Wendat people and to promote its history and its culture, as well as um, the arts of the First Nations as well. So here you can see how the communities lived and you can also stay in the neighbouring hotel for late night ancient stories around the fire as well. I've actually done it myself and it was a really great experience. Um, nearby here as well, you've also got the newly opened Omwa Luminar attraction, which just um, opened last year. Um, this is open all year round. It's the multimedia, multimedia journey, um, which is inspired by wind at myths and culture and symbols, and it will transport visitors um, to a magical universe which combines nature and technology. Um, so that's really great as well. Moving quickly on to what's new in Quebec City. Quebec City has recently welcomed the new restaurant Lee Clan, um, run by Stephane Modat. So you see, um, you might have 
you might recall the man that was in the video. He he is Stefan Mojat, and he is the famous chef that used to be the head chef at Chateau Frostnet for many years, and he's opened his own restaurant. Um, so yeah, he was in the he was the man in the video earlier. So he's um his restaurant was called Le Can. Um, so hotels in Quebec City have also undergone huge refurbishments, such as the, the Hilton, which was a 19 million pound renovation. I've stayed there myself, um, and it's it's really amazing as well. So lots new going on as well. Um, so we've touched on the cities, but I just want to quickly mention if we have time, um, just to talk about some of our outdoor activities. Um, so summer and winter, Quebec is a huge playground on land, on the water or in the air. Um, starting with the Laurentians, it's a region of ours. It's only a two hour drive from Montreal. So you have breathtaking mountains, which are surrounded by lakes and lake houses. The Laurentians are made up of smaller villages. And again, come winter or summer, they're always worth a visit. So during um, warmer months, visitors can take a vertical challenge by zip lining over the forest um, an example of where to do this is canyon Saint e um, come winter you can rent a snowmobile or enjoy skiing down one of the many mountains which are packed with plenty of ski lifts um our, our mountain can't speak today our mountains vary in height as well so they're perfect for families who maybe aren't as daring on the slopes as well um montreal blonde is here in the laurentians as well and it's hugely popular for skiing in the winter with um quaint shops restaurants and of course you've got the fairmont hotel as well which features an outdoor heated swimming pool um, more towards Quebec City, you have Charlevoix, um, where you can fat bike in the warmer months, um, visit vineyards, you can check out the new Club Med, which has recently opened, um, visit cheese and wine farms and so much more. Um, from Quebec City as well, you can catch a train from um, Le Malby, so it's possible for even travellers if they're not self-driving. Um, the Sachin Ford is also an attraction itself. It's spectacular. Got, got a spectacular glacial valley, which is now occupied by the majestic um, Sachin River. And there's so many ways to enjoy its magnificent banks and dizzy cliffs. You've got hiking, sea kayaking, sightseeing, cruising, sailing. There's just so much waiting, just waiting to be discovered. Very quickly, we have nearly 650 animal species in Quebec, including 90 species of mammals and 300 birds, li which live in Quebec. Um, it's not uncommon to come face to face with any of our migratory birds either, our white-tailed deer, our moose, our caribou, our beavers, our, our marine animals as well. Um, every year in late March or early February, we can also see tens of thousands of harp seals make their way to the ice surrounding um, the Ile de Madeleine, which, which, is, which is a small island just um, in the um, Sergene um, River there, um, St. St. Lawrence River rather, um, which they give birth to their pups. Um, so you can take part in the seal watching excursion to see them up close, which is a unique exhilarating experience. Um, black bears are also um, can be found in nearly every corner of the maritime regions of Quebec as well and the best way to observe bears um, in complete safety is take, bar take part in an organized um, bear watching activity. Um, we're also known for our amazing whale watching um, in the autumn in Gaspisi on the St Lawrence River and there are plenty of whale watching cruises for your clients to book with. Um, I'd say the best time to go whale watching is in the summer or early early autumn as well. Um, I realise we're running out of time, but just quickly, we have so much accommodation in our national parks as well. So CPAC is part of our um, national park group, uh, if you like. Um, we've got so many different lodges and everything here, which you can stay. Again, you can find all of these on our website. Um, so definitely worth having a look if you do have any clients that are looking for that really outdoor, lovely experience, something different. Um, it's guaranteed that we'll definitely have something for them. So we've touched through um, winter fun just very quickly, but we'll just touch on now how to get to Quebec. Um, so this is our flight set um, schedule, which you can see on here. So we are London to Gatwick. We now have a direct route, um, which launches from May this year to September. So it's once per week, um, again, from May to September, and it's from London Gatwick with Air Transat. Um, with Air Transat as well, we have the London Gatwick um, to Montreal, um, route which is daily all year round with Air Canada we are London Heathrow to Montreal it's daily service for the winter double daily in the summer British Airways um we fly from London Heathrow to Montreal that's four times during the winter and daily in the summer and as I said before Quebec makes a great twin centre with other provinces as well um including Ontario which I mean you can get the via rail from Montreal through to Toronto and it only takes about three hours I think so um but generally yeah Quebec is only a seven um, and a half hour flight from the UK um, and like you can see on there we've got plenty of um, direct routes as well which you can you can take as well 
So that was um, a very quick whistle stop tour of um, Quebec. Um, but if you're not already following us on Hablo as well, please um, do follow us on there um, as we'll be looking to launch um, our own webinar series with some of our partners very soon, which would be quite exciting. Um, but yeah, if you do have any questions, let me know here or I'm sure Sarah will also share my email around as well. I will indeed. Thank you very much, Laura. OK, so we've got a couple of questions that have come through. Um, Celine's asked, but you have already covered this, but just as a refresher, when was Chateau Frontenac renovated? Oh, it was a few years ago. Um, okay. I don't know exactly when. I think it was about two years ago, if that, but it looks amazing inside. OK, super. Um, Colleen's asked, what are the warmer weather months best to explore outdoors with hiking and seeing the wildlife? Um, well, you can see wildlife all year round, um, but the best time to go hiking, I would say, is the summer. So um, for Quebec, we're really popular um, from May to through to September. That's where we have the most um, airlift as well. Um, and generally, that's our warmer weather. So if you like to think that we have the same seasons, if you like, so our summer in Quebec starts the same time as it does in the UK. So it's very similar. We just have quite a cold winter when it comes. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, we've just had the same question come through again. Um, yeah, to walk and experience the outdoors without having to bring winter clothes. So yeah, May, May to September. May to September, so, yeah, for sure. Good. Um, is there a central website which lists festivals and um, events and things like that that are happening in the province? Um, I would say, Mon I mean, all of our regions have loads of cultural events, festivities, um, it depends where you're going. So if you are going to Montreal, it might be worth just having a look at Visit Montreal's website um, and they list all of their festivities going on as well. You can have a look at our website, bonjourquebec.com and we try to feature as much as possible. Um, but generally just try and look at the region's um, websites as well because they are best. They tell you maybe more information, where to book tickets um, and everything else. So if you're going to Montreal, have a look at that. Have a look at Quebec, Quebec City as well. They also list a lot of their festivals and, and carnivals going on. And then we also have Charlevoix as well, as well as some of the more remote regions, which have a fair few good things going on throughout the year as well. Super. Um, does Quebec City have a train station if people want to get on the train from Montreal, for example? Yes, it does have a train station. You can actually get the Via Rail. So you can get the Via Rail from Quebec City to Montreal. And that Via Rail will also go through to um, Toronto as well. So if you did want to do that Twin Centre, it's perfect for that. Super. Um, you mentioned most people speak English, but in Quebec City, do they have English signs and um, road signs and things and monuments? Yeah, they yeah they do. Um, I when I went when I, when I went to Quebec, I didn't have a, a problem at all. Um, to be quite honest, everything's written in English. Everyone speaks English in the in the key cities like Montreal and Quebec City. You won't have a problem. Okay, super. Um, is there a restaurant week, um, an event which has become very popular in many cities in Montreal or Quebec City? Uh, there very well could be. I'm not aware of it, but it wouldn't surprise me at all because... <laughs> Quebec City and Montreal, they love uh, a, a festi festival week or or events like that. So I wouldn't, I, d I don't know for sure. I'd have to check, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't run it past them yet. Brilliant. So when we do the, when I send you the um, stats and the webinar recording and everything, would you just be able to sort of write to everybody and just let them know yeah. um, for that? Super. Erin yeah. um, has asked, um, could you quickly talk about what time of year might be better for clients with specific interests? For example, nature versus the city, exploring versus comfort and sports and adventure. Um, the, oh, the best time of year, I would definitely say between May and September, again, just because you've got that, that airlift, you've got that direct route into Quebec City as well. Um, so you don't have to get from Montreal to Quebec City, you can get in and out. Um, and generally the weather is just a little bit better. It's just a little bit promised. Um, it's a little bit warmer as well, especially if you're doing those outdoor activities. Yeah, I was there in December and um, it was like a winter wonderland and there was people ice skating outside and um, the it was very, very, very cold. Um, it, it was yeah. warmer. Uh, Montreal was warmer but Quebec City was um, extremely cold and especially with the cobbled streets and everything um, but it was an amazing time to go and um, a friend of mine's just come back and it was thick snow and it was it was just unbelievable I mean they they did a lot um, in that time so I suppose it depends on how um, how you know good they are with uh, wrapping up and getting out there and exploring which you can you can do ultimately throughout the year um, yeah. it's just a lot colder in the winter months um, 
it's a different Do experience you know? yes exactly you should go twice it's the same with new york and places like that you go twice once in summer and once in winter and you get a completely different experience there's different mm -hmm. things to see um and all of it is a special month or a special time to visit uh so thank you for that sorry i'm taking over um do you need an international driver's license to rent a car oh good question not as far as i'm aware but i would have to check for you okay super um and what currency is accepted and used um, the Canadian dollar. Okay, super. Okay, your grilling has finished. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> okay, so um, we don't have any more questions. So it's a time of the day where we go to um, see who's been listening. So as I reminded you all, you've all got a point that goes into the spin to win. If you answer the question correctly with Laura and Polo, and it's going to be a question that they've covered during the webinar, um so laura get thinking because uh you was a little late joining so i forgot to tell you this um and then if we can go to chat and make sure your drop down says everyone the person that answers correctly fastest um the first correct answer they'll get 10 entries into the spin to win and then what i'll do is um tomorrow i'll pop your names into the spin to win and i'll announce them uh when i send the follow-up and the copy of the recording so polo would you like to go first with your question, please? Yes, of course. Thank you, uh, Sarah. The question is, what is the name of the main uh, surfing uh, town in the Riviera Nayarit or the, the surfing capital, as I mentioned on the presentation, uh, of in the Riviera Nayarit? Please. And you have to spell it correctly. Well, yes. Yeah, ideally, I think that's... Some have let me just to see who's the first. So basically, yeah, the answer is Sayulita. Uh, so the spelling, I think, is Danny Ang. Danny Ang? Sayulita uh, is the name of the things. Danny, yeah. He well, was the spelling. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's the first spelling. Good. Thank you. Congratulations. Super, Danny, you've got the 10 entries. Um, and Laura. Okay. So my question is, how long is the direct route from London to Quebec? Here we go. I think Shanice. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yep. Yeah. So it's Shanice. Uh, Shanice. Super amazing. Um, Polo, Laura, thank you for the great presentations. Um, and ju just you know super super places to go and visit so do keep sending all of your bookings to laura and polo they will send you a follow-up so if you've got any further questions please do reach out to them and um, they're here to help you um and they'll happily you know give extra training and talk you through things if need be so a big thank you to everybody uh for attending today um sorry we've run over a little well nearly a couple of minutes to go um but thank you we'll see you all next week laura thank you very much and polo Thank you, super pre presentations. No worries. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank Bye -bye. you. See you later. Bye. Bye.